welcome again so today we'll be continuing to build a razor pages application and learn mvc design pattern a little bit and this is the part 10 of this current series so what is the learning outcome the learning outcome is to build a to-do list application and we will walk through building a simple to-do list application with razor pages and in memory collection as a database and learn the MVC de design pattern in the process. Now, before I switch over to the, our uh, actual project, let me tell you that, you know, this is my channel and uh, you can access the community tab, which is basically a tab to interact with my users and subscribers and my uh, valued viewers. So I will be actually using this community channel to post uh, any message and update any message about my creation and also um, I will be publishing my Udemy courses. I have got four cutting edge courses on Microsoft Stack of Product. I will be giving periodic promotions and that will be all discussed uh, in this um, community tab. So please have a look at this community tab which can be accessed even if you are not my subscriber. You can just copy this, you can just uh, bookmark this link and this link can be accessed like I am accessing on a different browser and where I am not logged in. Okay, so I can still access this community tab. So I strongly encourage you to do so for any uh, latest updates. Thank you very much. So let's proceed to the course. So I have already switched over to Visual Studio and let's start building our application. So last time we have seen a very um, elementary razor page so this will be built around razor page and razor page also in asp.net core um, is built around an mvc design pattern apart from the mvc controller which we will be taking in a later lecture all right so let's start so first of all we'll build uh, add a folder new folder called model And we'll add a model to do list model. So, right click class, and this will be named as to do list class, to do list model rather. So a public class shell is created for me and the namespace has changed to ASP.NET Core Web Application Model. So this is the project name dot the folder name. Now let me create two public properties. Prop tab tab and uh, I will first property is uh, ID. Let it be ID and then the next property will be uh, to delist uh, name okay so what is the item or you can say um, yeah, whatever name you'd like to give but I will give it a name prop tab tab and this will be a string it returns a string type and this is name all right and next we'll create a service class just like in um, this will be actually um, an abstraction for the uh, database so to interact with the model class so we'll create a service class in a new folder so add new folder services services folder and we'll create a to do service add a to do service class so add class So to do service class. Okay, so let's start coding. So the namespace has become changed to the project name dot the folder name. Alright, so first of all, let's create a list 
of to-do list model. So I'll create a list, generic list class. So call this to-do lists. Out of all of the suggestions, you can pick up any suggestion in the IntelliSense, a new list of to-do list model and then pair of empty braces, circular braces. Now, here I will um, create a method. So just follow along, public, I will copy this part, it will return, this method will return a list of to-do list model. So I will copy from here. And I will name this get items because it will be getting item for a particular category. Get items for category and I will pass the category as a string. And I have to complete this method. Now this string, this category will be passed to it from the um, model, from the from the uh, calling from the page handling uh, page model class. So if category, my condition is if category is not null, category not equals null, then I will add to the collection list collection. So this is to do lists dot add add method I will call. So new to do list model and I will create an in memory collection. You can see this ID and name the two properties of this to do list model is exposed already. Okay. So I'll just name it arbit. I will um, give it a value one and uh, name equals say so let's say homework. Remember this is a to do list of items. Okay. And then semicolon and then copy it over several times as many times as you'd like to add a to do list. All right, so change the ID to two and three and this ID becomes three, name this something else, do is, I'm just making it a homework type of thing, you know, the daily work that you need to do at home. Homework, do dishes. Uh, visit market okay something like that you can add many other stuff as a reminder of the to-do list that you have to do right and then after adding this so this is still giving the squiggly line because I'm not returning anything so let's return let this to-do list return and this to-do lists and this will be happy all the squiggly line is gone to do service is made, to do list model is made. Okay, so two things out of the way, and then I have to add the razor page. So let us add the razor page and name it as category.cshtml. Okay, so in the pages, right click the pages folder and add here, it will be a razor page. And how do we add a razor page? It's a tutorial for showing how to add a razor page. So click on add. You can name it anything else, but you know, because this will be giving the to do list item particular to a category. So I will name this as category, category, generate a page model class. Yes, create a partial view, no, use a layout page. Okay, um, let me get without a layout page and I will give the layout is ne if needed, okay? like the bootstrap we'll have to add in that case because I am not using a layout page. So you can 
add a layout page. It doesn't matter. Actually, you can tick this box. So click on add. Now this will take a lot of time. So we'll come back again in a few seconds. Now we have got this category razor page built for us and there is no layout. So we'll add it to the head, the bootstrap class. But before that, we'll inspect the category model, which derives from the page model class. We'll complete this part. So here I will um, inject a to do service, okay, which could be of read only type. So anyway, so private read only to do service. So to do service and name it underscore service okay so i've already ap applied this using statement you know asp.net core web application dot services all right and now i will inject this service to the constructor this is let us build a constructor first if there is no constructor so c t o r tab tab public category model and I will inject this to do service here. To do service and call this service so that this um, declared variable underscore service, as you are now aware how to do the dependency injection by injecting a service to a constructor. So underscore service equals service. Okay. And void on git rather than void on git i will show you the return of an action result page anyway the void will also work in this case but i will return um, the page with an action result so i will make it i will pass the parameter category category which is of a type string and set the category here to let's say to do list you can name the categories anything as you like and then let us see uh, let us first declare in order to complete this i need to declare a public property so prop list of items okay so prop tab tab so this will be of a type list of to-do list models so list of to-do items so and I'll call this items right and then this items will be assigned from here items equals I'll use this injected service underscore service and dot. Now you can see get items from category is exposed this method and it is expecting a string category. This pass this category over here and finally return the page. Return this page. All right. So at this stage, if you run this application, it will come up with a problem at that, you know, the service class is still to be registered in the startup. So we'll do that as a last thing. So go to the startup class and register your service in the configure service method. So if you haven't gone through my earlier tutorials about the startup class to which registers the services internal as well as the framework services, you have to go through that. So add transient or add singleton doesn't matter or even add scoped will also work. So that's another um, story, another topic, which one we should use, add transient or add singleton or even add scope, there is method. So that's a different topic. It has been discussed very well by some authors. You can just search in the YouTube, you'll find the tutorials. So to do service, okay. So add transient to do service and everything else is fine use endpoints 
this pain points remember the one more thing you need to add that is i have to add a style sheet because there is no layout that we have used so i will use a style sheet just for the bootstrap and also change the body to show the items okay at the moment the body doesn't have anything so here i will use the razor syntax act for each tap tap var item in collection now what is this collection this is a model okay so instead of collection our collection is model this model that we are using page model category model dot and in the model i have got items okay in this model i have created the items public property and then i will just copy from my clipboard so i have copied from my clipboard this div class background light card card text so to do item colon at item dot name so these properties are exposed okay name and id are exposed now i will have to run the application and before that i have actually put the to do services in focus but we have actually worked on this category dot css html all right let's run the application with the iis express button and we can see the welcome page the home page and let's browse to this url category and you have got all the to do items homework do dishes visit market so which is in line with what we have just seen in the to do services okay so homework do dishes visit market now we have seen a very basic razor page in our asp.net core 3.1 project earlier we just rendered the razor view and did not contain any logic so this pattern may suffice for just a content heavy website like a marketing website without any need for data from a database or even use forms to allow submission of data however it is very common to have many other dynamic functionalities in a web page we need to build a more complex razor page that loads data from a database or even an in memory collection so in this lecture we had taken an actual look at a slightly more complex razor page and this was a part of a to do list application and um, it was used to display all the to do items for a given category and it used the in memory list collection right and let us see the mvc design pattern this page handler is the central controller for the razor page it receives an input from the user the category method parameter in this case and calls out to the brains of the application what is the brains in this case is the service class or the to do service class and passes the data by exposing the items property to the razor view which generates the html response now if you recall this looks like the m model view controller design pattern isn't it so even though we are using uh, razor um page handlers and page model it is based on the mvc design pattern for asp.net core okay